Imagine it's the early 1950s, America is booming, the interstate highway system is on the horizon, and the romance of the open road is at its peak. This wasn't just about getting from point A to point B, it was about the journey itself. And if you were going to travel that journey by bus, there was one vehicle that stood head and shoulders above the rest, quite literally. This is the story of the Greyhound PD4501 Scenic Cruiser, a vehicle that was part design masterpiece, part engineering nightmare, and a true American icon. For anyone who traveled with Greyhound from its debut in July 1954 all the way through the mid-1970s, the sight of this split-level giant was unforgettable. But we're talking about it today, not just for its nostalgia, but because it represents a fascinating collision of brilliant minds and challenging compromises. This wasn't just a bus, it was a project that brought together the transport giant Greyhound, the manufacturing prowess of General Motors, and the visionary touch of one of the 20th century's most famous industrial designers, Raymond Lowy. Lowy's firm, fresh off celebrated automotive designs like the 1953 Studebaker Starliner, was synonymous with forward-thinking, streamlined style. It was a natural fit for Greyhound's ambition to create the bus of the future. And what they created was truly special. Over a short production run from 1954 to 1956, GMC would build a total of 1,001 of these majestic coaches exclusively for Greyhound, and they would define highway travel for a generation. The Cena Cruiser's main attraction was right there in its name. Its most revolutionary feature, at least for the United States, was its patented split-level design. The rear of the coach was elevated, creating a rolling observation deck with huge panoramic windows. Passengers, especially children, would rush to claim the front row seats of that upper deck, giving them an unparalleled, sweeping view of the American landscape. It was a simple idea, but it transformed a mundane bus ride into a cinematic experience. Now, the idea of a double-decker bus wasn't new. They were a common sight on the streets of Europe. In fact, a Spanish bus, the Pegaso Z403, introduced in 1951, bore a striking resemblance to the Cena Cruiser's shape. But it's hard to call it a direct copy. The truth is, Greyhound and Raymond Lowy had been experimenting with this concept since the 1940s. The Cena Cruiser was the result of a long and complex seven-year development process. The journey began with this fascinating prototype, the GX-1. Its patent, featuring Raymond Lowy's name, was filed way back in 1944. The GX-1 was a true, full double-decker bus, but it had two major problems. First, at 35 feet, it was the standard length for buses of the era, but Greyhound's ambitious president, Orville S. Caesar, wanted something bigger to carry more passengers. And second, and more critically, the GX-1 was simply too tall. It couldn't fit into many of Greyhound's existing terminals and maintenance garages. So, Caesar, whose name also appears on that patent, laid down the law. The next version had to be longer, and it had to be lower. This led to the creation of the deck-and-a-half design, a brilliant compromise that kept the elevated scenic view while solving the height problem. This mandate gave birth to the GX2 prototype in the late 1940s. Built by Greyhound's own engineers in collaboration with GM and Lowy's firm, this bus was starting to look very familiar. It was stretched to 40 feet long, a massive size for its time, though still 5 feet shorter than a modern coach bus. The GX2 was powered by a single, reliable GM Detroit Diesel 671 inline-6 engine, paired with a tough-as-nails 4-speed manual transmission with a 2-speed splitter, effectively giving the driver 8 forward gears. Interestingly, while Lowy's firm was involved, the patent for the GX2's final design doesn't bear his name, instead crediting GM designer Albert Hober. The GX2 was a solid proof of concept, but for the final production model, GM and Greyhound would make a few more crucial and ultimately problematic changes. 
When the final PD-4501 Cena cruiser hit the roads in 1954, it arrived with what would become its Achilles heel. The single 671 engine from the prototype was gone. Greyhound wanted more power for the heavier, feature-packed production bus. At the time, GM didn't have a single larger diesel engine ready for this application, and putting a competitor's engine into a GMC-built coach was simply on the question. So they devised one of the most audacious engineering gambles in bus history. They installed two smaller engines. Tucked in the back of every new Cena Cruiser were a pair of GM Detroit Diesel 471 four-cylinder engines, joined together by a complex fluid coupling. In theory, this gave the bus V8-level power. In reality, it was a maintenance nightmare. The twin engines rarely stayed perfectly synchronized. They were difficult to service, and the specialized knowledge required was often lacking at depots across the country. Drivers, accustomed to simpler machines, would often try to tweak them, sometimes making things worse. A veteran driver I spoke to recalled that when both engines were running perfectly, the bus could climb hills like nothing else on the road. The problem was, that perfect state was incredibly rare. The questionable engineering choices didn't stop there. Instead of the prototype's 8-speed setup, the production model came with a 3-speed, non-synchronized manual, also with a 2-speed splitter, for 6 total speeds. Why the downgrade? Perhaps it was a cost-saving measure, but for drivers used to the familiar pattern of a 4-speed, the new transmission was awkward and unpopular. But beneath that gleaming skin and behind those mechanical headaches, the Cena Cruiser was packed with luxury ahead of its time. It featured a revolutionary air suspension system, which gave it a smooth floating ride that was unparalleled. The entire coach was climate controlled with air conditioning. It had power steering and power brakes, which were essential for maneuvering such a large vehicle. It even had a lavatory and special ceiling vents designed to pull cigarette smoke out of the cabin, a reminder of a different era of travel. The attention to detail was incredible. The interior fabrics, designed in collaboration with Lowy's team, featured intricate patterns specifically chosen to hide stains and wear over decades of service, a clever bit of practical design. Eventually, Greyhound acknowledged the failure of the twin-engine experiment. In the early 1960s, the company undertook a massive, expensive program to retrofit its entire fleet of nearly 900 Cena cruisers. The troublesome twin 471s were ripped out and in their place went a single, legendary engine, the Detroit Diesel 8V71. Paired with a standard four-speed Spicer manual, this conversion finally gave the Cena Cruiser the reliability to match its stunning looks. These upgraded buses, along with fixes for some early frame cracking issues, would go on to serve Greyhound faithfully into the mid-70s. The Cena Cruiser was more than just a bus, it was a rolling landmark. Its influence was so profound that its successor, the GMC PD4903, unofficially known as the Buffalo Bus, carried on its distinctive raised deck profile. Today, the Cena Cruiser remains a symbol of an optimistic age of American travel. It was a flawed masterpiece, a vehicle that aimed for the stars with its design, but was held back, initially, by the complexity of its own mechanics. It was the confluence of giants, Greyhound's ambition, GM's manufacturing, and Lowy's style that produced a vehicle that for millions of travelers wasn't just a ride, but a memory. Do you have a memory of riding in one of these incredible Cena cruisers? Share your story in the comments below. Thanks for watching.